So in the past, your your guitarist Dennis Piggy handled most of the songwriting. Did Piggy handle most of it on his own, or was it more of a collaborative process with the band? It was a really a band process where we would jam and improvise and just try to find find ideas on the spot. But I must say that Piggy was the, the main songwriter. Same with Chewy uh, these days. And I think everyone listening to this podcast will know that Piggy, Dennis Damore, unfortunately passed away. And Daniel Mongrain, who you call Chewy, who has previously been in the band's Martyr, and I believe he recorded a, an album with Gore Guts as well, uh, is your new lead guitarist. As, as far as Chewy taking over for the guitars, was Chewy always the most natural choice? Uh, yes, yes, actually, um, because Snake and I we had seen we had seen Dan uh, play a show, and uh, we were very impressed. But at, at at this point, we were on a hiatus, and we were on a mission, Jason, Snake, and I, to uh, finish the album Infinity, which we had started with Piggy uh, in uh, two thousand five or something like that, and. 2004 actually but they were um, we didn't think we would play live again at all we had an invite we were invited by uh, the festival heavy montreal in 2008 to perform and i thought it would only be a, a one-off show you know but word spread around and soon enough we were invited to uh to go to Japan with Testament and then to play the Monsters of Rock in Calgary uh, with Judas Priest and Ozzy and so and it it just kept going actually and we we've been playing a lot since. And what made Chewy the right choice to not just uh, be your live guitarist but to also take over the songwriting as well? At first, we were for a while we toured the uh, '80s material. And also uh, songs from the Pra early '90s, uh, and a couple of tracks from Infinity because it had uh, finally came out in 2009, and we did that for uh, a few years, and until we started writing Target Earth, and that's really where I realized that um, the spirit of Voivod was intact with uh, Chewie's uh, playing. How would you describe Chewie style to Piggy style? Piggy is definitely more old school, almost boogie. I mean, he, he really liked hard rock uh, in general and uh, Jimi Hendrix and Jimmy Page, but he was also a big fan of David Gilmour and Alex, Alex Lifeson from Rush. Also a huge fan of Robert Tripp. Uh, so, um, uh, these uh, these are very old school uh, guitar players, and Chewy, I would say, his, his style is uh, to my ears is more surgical and and more like tech metal uh, as Meshuga or uh, Gojira would be. But also, Chewy is definitely more jazz. But I really feel at ease with it because I um, I learned to play uh, with Robert Wyatt from Soft Machine and Christian Vander from Magma, Terry Bozio from Zappa. And uh, so uh, it's no problem with me. It's a great challenge, actually. This new fusion metal we are in with Rocky and Chewy, I think it's great. Yeah, the new stuff is great. And we'll, we'll speak about this latest album shortly. Uh, I'm curious, yeah. during this, this present period of Voivod uh, with Chewy on board, how do songs start for you guys now? Uh, you mean the how how we build them up or? Ah uh, yes, exactly. Yeah, well, yeah, it's uh, actually the same technique where we um, we we get into uh, our studio and we jam and improvise and record everything, and it's stuff that you really can't make up if you try to sit down and write music. You know, it's it's not the same as jamming together and improvising feeding off, off each other's ideas and uh, so we pull we pull some very interesting stuff from these jam sessions and uh, Chewie sort of rearrange it into templates of songs and then we go back to the studio 
And it's really where it morphs into Voivodian material when we have these templates of songs and we're trying to really uh, uh, construct them at the rehearsal space. And so, um, yeah, it's it's a, a, a real team effort. But I would say that Chewie is the real arranger in the band for sure. Yeah, but but yeah, if you, I mean, saying that for the new album, we had to proceed uh, proceed differently because of the pandemic. Ah, yeah, of course. But in in general, when you guys do have the ability to meet together in the studio and jam together, do songs usually start with a riff? Oh, it really depends. Even back in the days, the song Tribal Convictions, I came up with the beat and then this, the song started from the beat. And so uh, sometimes, let's say for uh, the song Synchro Anarchy from the new album, I had a flash of a beat, a rhythm where I would skip, uh, skip one beat every 16 or some, something like that. And so... Um, Sometimes it's a riff, and sometimes it's actually um, one of Snake's melodies uh, that he has in mind. And uh, of course, Rocky uh, comes up with uh, bass uh, riffs as well. So yeah, everybody is involved. So I'd, I'd like to to speak about your your drumming and your drum technique a little bit. I'm not personally a drummer, and so you have to forgive my ignorance, but. From the era that you came from, that thrash metal era, the drumming became not just fast, but also very metronomic. Do you know what I mean? Uh, yes. Uh, you know, like um, a lot of like Lombardo style or Charlie Benante style drumming, where it was very fast, but also almost machine-like. Yes, yes. Some, yeah, sometimes you can't really tell the difference uh, between the drum machine and the real drummer. It's right. But your, your drumming was always different. Like Voivod always had a very unique rhythm to their songs. I'm curious how you developed that style. It, well, there is a lot of thumb beats involved because of my influence from the Six Pistols and uh, later uh, Bauhaus, you know. And But uh, also, when I was a teenager, I discovered the band Van der Graaff Generator. And the drummer, Guy Evans, really intrigued me because it always seemed like he was drumming backwards where the snare was uh, one time later or earlier than expected. And and I really learned from him where I got the into the habit of, I would uh, hear, let's say, uh, Chewie comes uh, uh, comes up with uh, a riff. Uh, well, okay, I would, I would think my first idea would be to go like that. So let's try the opposite. And then... Um, it always surprises everybody in the room. <laughs> but once they get it, it, that's where it really becomes interesting. I mean, w- within the drumming world, do you get a lot of feedback from from other drummers about what you're doing? Yes, of course. And I think that people seem to like my freestyle. And I uh, really took it from Filthy Animal Taylor from Motorhead, where I realized that he uh, could play the same song differently every night, you know, and I uh, didn't care if the role was the same every time he plays that song at the uh, at the same spot and all that. So there's some of that involved. Uh, I tried to also put a lot of dynamics into uh, my playing, and I, I think it also comes from the prog rock drummers that I uh, learned from. So, yeah, it's not, like you said, as... Um, it's not like the same dynamic the whole way through, like some drummers like to approach it this way. For me, uh, I like to um, use this the acoustic sound of the instrument the best I can and the, and the, the most I can by uh, hitting light and heavy and different angle with the sticks. And yeah, it's um, so I, I, I get, the, I, I, get, I guess I get this, comment often that my style comes more from instinct and so uh, it's a compliment to me yeah i mean maybe it comes from instinct but i think it's it's tremendously creative or or analytical in the way that you're you know as opposed to the most obvious solution of like you know hitting on the one or or you know what a a standard thrash or metal drum beat would be Uh, you're finding ways around that 
to keep the to keep the rhythms challenging and to keep the music interesting. And I think that's always been a big part of Voivod sound. I think the difficulty is to keep a groove going because I always try to make sure that the, there's a groove to the beat, even though it can be uh, complex, uh, complex or backwards. Or I try to make sure that the audience will try will still be able to uh, bob their heads. <laughs> <laughs> What about time signatures? Do you do you work around a lot of different time signatures, either consciously or naturally? It's very natural. I have to ask Chewy what time signature I'm drumming in sometimes because <laughs> <laughs> he teaches music at college at college, so he knows that stuff. Yeah, I um, I, I just wing it really, and yeah, I I, I try to um, I don't know. Uh, where it comes from, some sort of impatience of uh, where if it's the same thing for too many bars, I have to do something somewhere <laughs> in between so it's not the same all the way through. And yeah, I had to control myself because in the early albums, I was really going all over the place. And on the first three albums, I, I had a goal and I, I was not ready yet to achieve it. In terms of my uh, playing, it's only around Damage and Hatras that I was satisfied with what I, what I was hearing on the vinyl. Recording techniques have changed a lot since the early days. Did you ever have problems with engineers who wanted you to stick to a, a grid or follow like a, a Pro Tools map or something like that? Oh, uh, I actually uh, had... I did sessions uh, with and without click tracks, and I I, I like them all. And I never ran into a problem where uh, an engineer or a producer was imposing uh, his views. Or um, it's the same with the labels; uh, they generally um, really let us do what we wanted, which we did uh, because they knew they signed Voivod, so they're gonna get weird music that's not necessarily mainstream or even when we were on major labels with the Andrew Rad and the Auto Limits album and uh, we were um, a bit more pop but it was still a bit too weird for um, a mainstream radio. <laughs> yeah, I think with Voivod, especially the, the major labels probably never understood what you guys were doing and so weren't able to change it because uh, they couldn't give any feedback. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. And actually, the, we had a great relationship with uh, MCA, and we had the, uh, a deal for seven albums. And But um, after uh, Snake left the band in 94, and then we became a trio with Eric Forrest, the music became a lot heavier again. And that's where they didn't understand how they could promote it. And uh, and they uh, they just said uh, you're free to shop around and you uh, which uh, was great because they could have shelved the, the contract, uh, which would have been a disaster because then you sometimes you can't even use the name of the band anymore in these uh, crazy court cases, you know. <laughs> 